Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video as well as the earnings report. Port. Guys, today we're going to be analyzing the earnings report that Johnson Johnson just released. And well, let's actually take a look at this, guys, and then compare it to the past ones from a year ago, which is in the earnings report, as well as then come up with new assumptions, or if maybe we want to make new assumptions using this kind of free cash, we'll just see what we would like to pay for this company on that kind of basis. So with that said, guys, let's get started with this analysis. All right, guys, I am over here at the earnings report for Johnson & Johnson quarter 3, 2022. Now, I will have, guys, this earnings report website, link in the description below. It'll be the first one. If you guys would like to read it, it is, once again, very, very lengthy, as all of them are. But today, I'm just going to go over a couple of the few points, like the overall financial results, as well as their statements. So let's actually get started with this, guys. Johnson & Johnson's report Q3 2022 results. Reported sales growth of 1.9% to $23.8 billion with operational growth of 8.1% and adjusted operational growth of 8.2%. Earnings per share EPS was $1.68, increasing 22.6% and adjusted EPS of $2.55, decreasing by 1.9%. So now let's actually come over here into Seeking Alpha and see what the analysts were saying when it came to this, because it's actually fairly interesting. Now the EPS normalized as we just saw was $2.55, which was a beat guys by 6 cents. However, the gap actual was a miss by 40 cents to $1.68, which is exactly what we just saw right here. The earnings per share actual was $1.68, which even though it wasn't increased guys of 22%, 0.6%, it still did not match what the analysts were actually wanting. However, when it came to the adjusted, even though it decreased by 1.9%, it actually still fell in line with the analyst beating it by 6 cents. So this is kind of like opposite of exactly what the analysts were trying to say, because essentially the increase not in line with analyst estimate, but the decrease was in line with analyst estimate. In fact, it was a beat, which is kind of funny when you think about it like that. Company is maintaining 2022 full year guidance midpoint for adjusted operational sales and reported adjusted EPS, increasing adjusted operational EPS performance offsetting continued unfavorable currencies impact. Pretty much just saying that they're pretty much in line with what they were expecting from the beginning. Now, here's a couple of notes when it came to the CEO. We got Johnson & Johnson today announced results for third quarter 2022. Quote, our third quarter performance demonstrates our continued strength and resilience across all three of our businesses, said the CEO. Through the ongoing efforts of our team around the world, we continue to navigate the dynamic macroeconomic environment and remain focused on delivering transformative healthcare solutions. Looking ahead, I remain confident in our business and ability to continue advancing our innovative portfolio and pipeline. Pretty much just saying, guys, that I think they were pretty much expecting all of this. There really wasn't any surprises in the good or in the bad. Now, let's actually take a look at some of these financial results. This is the overall, guys. And we got here in the millions of dollars, we got the reported sales Q3 of 2022 was $23.8 billion. One year ago, it was $23.3 billion, which was an increase, guys, of 1.9%. We got the net earnings, Q3, $4.45 billion. One year ago, it was $3.7 billion, which was an increase of 21.6%. And the EPS was $1.68, which was an increase from 2021 of 22.6%, which was $1.37. Now, looking at the non-GAAP in millions of dollars, we got the operational sales. We only got an increase of 8.1%. Adjusted, it was an increase of 8.2%. Adjusted net earnings was actually a decrease, guys, of 2.7%, going from 6.97 billion 2021 to 6.77 billion in 2022. And the adjusted EPS was down by a negative 1.9%. From $2.60 to $2.55. So all in all, guys, as you guys can, can clearly see, it was kind of just okay, right? Everything was just on par, like for the reported sales, which is essentially the revenue, only increased by 1.9%, which again, if we actually come over here, we can see that it was actually a beat by $357.93 million in accordance to analysts. So that actually made things kind of rosy when it came to Johnson & Johnson. Now, today, you can see that they were actually down throughout the day at 0.35%. But after market, they came up by around 0.31%. But the overall net gain when it came to the stock was at negative 0.04%. So overall, the stock guys just didn't do anything when it came to these reports. And you can clearly see that like it was good. I'm not saying it's not, but it was kind of just 
okay, right? It was increasing, slowly increasing, so it's kind of expected when it comes to such a big corporation. But now with that said, guys, let's actually come over here to the discounted free cash flow. And do we want to change anything? Honestly, in my personal opinion, I think not. I think that, you know, 4% is still somewhat fair enough. 6% and 8% for the highest assumption, I think is also still fair. Remember, these are the numbers only for Q3, not the entire year. This is taking it into account for the next four years. So assuming that they'll grow at 6% in the next four years and buy a 2% share buyback, you will get a required rate of return of 10% if you were to buy it at $169, not adjusting for debt. And on top of that, guys, if we actually search for share repurchase program, we can actually see it right here. Johnson Johnson announces $5 billion share repurchase program. And clicking on that, guys, we can actually see that they announced this back in September 14th, 2022. So they're going to continue buying back shares, guys, at $5 billion of their common stock, which is actually really, really solid. And doing that math, guys, actually taking a $5 billion and then assuming that they're all going to buy it at the current share price of $166, which is at today, we can actually see that that's actually around 1.15% of the shares buyback that they're essentially doing, which essentially falls in line with my assumptions here that I have for the low and median assumption. Again, telling me that at the correct share price of around 154 to 169, not adjusting for debt, and $158.96 to $173.48, adjusting for debt might be a fairly decent price. Now, again, the current share price, guys, is 166. So I think this is still falling falling in line with my assumptions and I think it's still at the current share price it is still looking fairly fairly good but anyways guys that pretty much does it for this video like if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on YouTube always remember that this is not financial advice I just wanted to go over the earnings for a company at Johnson Johnson if anybody's interested in a healthcare company and remember to have my calculators they are available for free anybody could have them and make your own assumptions make your own assumptions when it comes to discount and free cash flow as well as your own weighted grade all right guys so with that said, peace out and I will see you all in the next stock analysis video as well as the earnings report video.